Hello, this is Todd Luck, and I've done some reviews of Tarzan movies and Tarzan TV shows in recent years, in the last few decades, when there's been kind of this attempt to go back to Tarzan's roots and take inspiration from or adapt the Burroughs novels. Now, what surprised me, though, is when I dug a little deeper, that that's not just something that's happened in the last few decades. If you go all the way back to the silent movies, the very first Tarzan movies, to my surprise, they were directly based on the novels. They were attempts to adapt the Burroughs novels, which is really, really cool. And so one of the ones that Burroughs was involved with himself was called Son of Tarzan, based on the novel of the same name. Um, and when I watched it on YouTube, I was very impressed by the way they shot the movie and how faithful it was to the novel. Unfortunately, it is very, very deteriorated if you're looking at the original black and white movie. And I just kept thinking to myself, gosh, I really, really wish there was a way I could watch it and really appreciate the way they shot it and how beautiful the movie is. And so I did some research online and I found a Kickstarter from this place called Grapevine Video. And I missed the Kickstarter. It was already over, but it was to kind of restore this serial. It's actually a 15 chapter serial that, you know, you would go, I think probably each week and you would get a new chapter in the, in the movie theater. And they restored it and tinted it. And so I found this Blu-ray of it on Amazon, and you can either go on Grapevine Video's website or on Amazon and purchase this. But in my opinion, this is the way to watch this movie. The tinting and the restoration they did works miracles. Um, it is a fantastic Blu-ray uh, of this really old 1920 movie serial. And I couldn't figure out how to directly capture off the Blu-ray, so I just had to take some clips from the trailer they had to give you some examples of what the Blu-ray looks like compared to the black and white original. Uh, these are probably not the best examples there are a lot of scenes in there where it helps a lot more than what i'm about to show you but you get the idea you know the black and white is very deteriorated and the color looks a lot better it is much easier to make out much easier to see the actors and the sets and all the work that went into the movie and so they just did a great job with the packaging so the cover is from a movie poster of, of the time and there were several movie posters put out and you can actually see another one on the disc itself uh, it's a two disc set and the artwork on the discs is nice and then they have like this little thing that ran at the beginning of each of them this is the title card uh, on the back but it's just a really nice package and the menus on the blu-ray they're dvd style menus and so you have the high quality st scans of the movie posters on each of the menus and it's just really nice it's just a very polished high quality classy sort of uh, presentation both with the menus and the packaging so the movie very closely follows the novel so there's a villain left over from a previous Tarzan story named Ivan Pavlovich or Pavlovich and he's stranded in the jungle a ship finds him and he ends up getting a hold of this ape called a coot who is a friend of Tarzan's. And so he goes to Europe and forces a coot to perform as this trained ape. Meanwhile, Tarzan and Jane are living in England and they have a son named Jack. Jane fears that Jack is going to inherit his father's wild nature and forbids him from learning about anything involving the jungle which of course means that Jack is completely enamored in all things jungle. He hears about a coot and wants to go see the monkey perform or the ape perform. And uh, that happens and Pavlovich figures out that Jack is Tarzan's son. 
He kidnaps and tries to kill Jack. Now, Akut saves him. And in the novel, as one would expect, if you're attacked by an ape, you die. And that's what happens to Pavlovich in the novels. In the movie, he survives. And he actually becomes an ongoing villain in the serial. And so that actually changes things and creates an entirely new subplot just for the movie. And it's actually pretty interesting. There's actually a point at which they add in a scene where Jane gets kidnapped and Tarzan has to come after her in, into the jungle and stuff that's not in the novels, but it's done pretty well. Um, but getting back to Jack, son of Tarzan, um, after Akut saves him, uh, Jack, in all of his childhood wisdom, remember he's just a young boy, uh, thinks that he can just take Akut back to Africa, just hop on a ship with the ape and take him back to Africa without telling anyone and there'll be no consequences. So he gets on a boat and as you can probably guess, him and Akut end up washed up on the shores of Africa. It's a Burroughs story, kids. So Jack... Um, becomes very much like his father. He, you know, strips down, gets the loincloth, all that good stuff, and he meets this girl named Miriam. Miriam is a captive being raised by this evil sheik in this encampment, and he's very abusive to her. She finds out later that he kidnapped her from her real parents as revenge and stuff, and Jack saves Miriam and they go and basically live in the jungle together. And oh my God, if you've read the novels, you can imagine how adorable Jack and Miriam are as children sleeping together in a tree. I gotta tell you, it is even more adorable when you see it on film. It is the cutest thing I've ever seen. It is amazing. They just really spot on cast this movie. The children are just so perfect as Jack and Miriam. And of course, Jack becomes known as Korak, which in the language of the great apes means killer. Um, and we see them get older and they, they become, you know, teenagers. And there's a lot of stuff that happens, but, you know, it's a lot of it Burroughs adventure stuff. A lot of characters get separated and hunted and captured and escape. And it's just a really cool story in the Burroughs tradition and a really, really good novel. I highly recommend the novel. It is a beautifully shot movie with some very convincing jungles. It's not actually shot in Africa, but there are some very, very cool looking jungles in here. And the acting is good. Now it is a silent movie, right? So you gotta remember that other than occasional sentence that's flashed on the screen here and there, it's all done with their expressions and their mannerisms, so it's a little more exaggerated than what we're used to with movies with sound, right? But it's done well. I thought the, all the actors were good, and they did a fantastic job of finding children actors who look like the adult actors that they would grow into. It's just so, the cast is just so perfectly cast. Uh, Marion's acting as an adult is a little melodramatic, but that seems to be a choice on the actress's part because Miriam is a traumatized girl who really doesn't have any context of what normal humans are like. She was raised in this isolated state of torment her ch on her childhood. And then, you know, Korak takes her away and they live in the jungle by themselves so she really doesn't have context of how humans act and it just comes through in the performance but then later you'll see her uh, learn about civilization and how to be more civilized and she just is a completely different person so I thought that was well done she's a very very interesting character and Miriam's also interesting because she is the first jungle girl that Burroughs would write she was actually able to climb trees just as well as Korak, uh, which is done very well in the movie. And she's able to, you know, survive in the jungle and talk to the animals just like Korak. So that's kind of cool. So the monkeys in here are guys in suits. Now, I will say from a distance, I was very, very impressed. I really forgot 
there were human beings in those suits. They really move like animals. But when you get up close and see their faces, the suits look terrible. So it's one of those weird things where it's like, wow, this is some of the best monkeys I've ever seen in a Tarzan movie. And then you'll get that close up. It's like, whoa, that guy, that's a dude in a suit. <laughs> you know? So, um, and then there are lions in here. Um, they are real live lions, but there's never any particularly convincing uh, interaction between them and the actors, but they're there. Uh, but there is some very convincing interaction, very impressive stuff done with the elephants. Now, there is a lot of really impressive elephant riding, um, and that includes that famous scene from the novel that gets on the covers of the novel where Korak is tied to a stake, about to be executed, and then Tantor the elephant comes in, wraps him in the tr his trunk and lifts him up and carries him away. That, that friends, is actually in the movie. And I know what you're saying to yourself. That sounds insanely dangerous, Todd. And you're right. Um, it actually went off without a hitch in rehearsal. But unfortunately, when they were shooting it for real, the animal got spooked and the elephant threw the actor down to the ground. He was severely injured and an extra had to fill, or a stunt double had to fill in for the rest of that scene. Um, there were rumors that it actually killed the star of the movie, but those were false. Uh, he did recover from those injuries. Unfortunately, he had cancer and would pass away several years later. As far as flaws go, um, there are a few. So the movie does try to very faithfully follow the novels but it doesn't necessarily portray what's going on quite as well as other silent movies I've seen. Part of that is probably the complexity of the novel. It is a lot of characterization. It's a lot of internal conflicts. It's a lot of dialogue and scheming between villains. Um, and it's a lot of you know unusual action sequences, like there's a scene in a theater where the, where a coot causes a riot, you know, trying to get to Jack. Um, those are more difficult than your traditional action scenes that are a little easier to do in a silent movie. You know, when you only have a sentence here and there, it's kind of hard to communicate that. You know, there's like, for instance, there's a scene. Uh, where Jack th thinks that Miriam is dead and it just, you know, there's a lot of scenes like that that I feel like could have just used a little bit more dialogue flashed on that screen to help us understand what was going on. But I think overall you will get the gist of what's going on uh, in the movie. And again, it is a fantastic story. And I think the subplot they added in with Paul Vitch worked in the movie Though there are some lapses in logic occasionally during the, the subplot that he adds in. Uh, for instance, there's a conflict between him and the Sheik, which is basically just based on a misunderstanding that wouldn't happen if Paulvich was just able to complete a sentence when he's around the Sheik. I mean, it's just one of those things where all they had to do was talk to each other. Um, and there's also... Uh, scenes where Jane just feels like she's captured way too easy. You know, she'll escape and then they'll capture her like a, a minute later or something. It just seems like the, the women, Miriam and Jane, have a little bit more uh, capabilities as far as evading their captors and giving them trouble than what we see in the movie. There is a recap at the beginning of Tarzan's origin that's also kind of weird. I kind of wonder if the person who wrote it, you know, was all that familiar with English. It's just really strange the way it's phrased. It mentions everyone's race and keeps referring to Jane as the white girl instead of using her name. Once Jack is born, then they do start to call her Jane, um, and they do start writing in normal English, which is good. The, the rest of the movie is, is well written, uh, but for whatever reason, that beginning was just weird. Um, also, for some reason, uh, Lord Greystoke is Lord Greystone in this movie. I don't, I don't know why. Hollywood just has flaws in it sometimes. But I would consider those very minor flaws in the movie. 
Uh, one thing that did kind of bother me a little bit more was there was a scene where Jack is er in the jungle. It's early on, and there's a black warrior who's walking by, and Jack jumps on him, kills him, and takes his loincloth. And if you are, are watching the movie and you're like, oh, my God, this kid is a psychopath. He's going, like, full Lord of the Flies. He's, like doing Grand Theft Jungle, just going around killing people and taking their stuff without any compunction. Oh my God, maybe they, you know, they must have done this scene because they hated black people or whatever. Um, I understand that because in the, in the context of the movie, unfortunately, that's what it looks like. Now, in the novel, there's a lot more to it and there is some context that they definitely left out. And so to give you a little bit of context, let me read a passage from the novel. One day, as they were moving slowly alongside a river, they came unexpectedly upon a native village. Some children were playing beside the water. The boy's heart leaped within his breast at the sight of them. For over a month, he had seen no human being. What if these were naked savages? What if their skins were black? Were they not creatures fashioned in the mold of their maker, as was he? They were his brothers and sisters. He started towards them with a low warning a coot laid a hand upon his arm to hold him back. The boy shook himself free and with a shout of greeting ran forward toward the ebon players. And so the children get scared of him and they run away and the warriors uh, grab spears and start throwing them at him and start trying to kill him and they chase him. And so the context of that scene was that the warriors had kind of given up the chase. They, you know, he was hit, hidden in the jungle and so he was following them back, and he was leaping upon a straggler to kill him. Now, I'm not saying it's justified, right? But in the context of the novels, when Tarzan or Korak are reverting back to an animal, right? Or, or an animal, I guess Tarzan was raised that way. Um, they basically kill their enemies. That's kind of the law of the jungle. And that's basically what was happening there. And both Korak and Tarzan, you know, when they were young, went through that phase where, you know, they were more animal than man. And, you know, animals kill their enemies to take what they want. And, you know, obviously when Tarzan gets older and gets, you know, his influence with Jane and other people that civilize him, you know, he no longer does that. He, you know, he kills people in his youth he would never have killed when he was older. And the scene in the novel is the beginning of a series of scenes where Jack goes to different groups and is rejected by them. So after he tries to befriend the tribe of blacks who then try to kill him, he finds some white people in the jungle and thinks he can befriend them, but they pull shotguns on him and try to kill him. Then he goes to the apes and wants to join their tribe and they want to kill him too. And so, you know, this poor boy is just rejected on all sides. And then he finds this girl who is the one place he can find belonging is with Miriam. And I, you know, I wish all of that had been in the movie, but I think enough of it is to definitely get that message across and definitely, you know, keep that primal story about, you know, these rejected youth who find shelter within each other. And so it's a very interesting story. And the thing that kind of hit me after watching it as a movie was that basically this was the direction that MGM would take Tarzan in, right? If you think about what they did to Tarzan, it's this guy who never left the jungle and this girl from civilization who joins him. And so they live in the jungle alone together, you know, as kind of this Adam and Eve, and actually it even compares them to Adam and Eve in the trailers. Um, and so that's kind of Korak and Mario. So it's kind of weird to see, you know, the character of Tarzan, you know, taken in this direction that never happened in the novels, right? He lives in a house with Jane, you know, <laughs> Jane's not gonna live in the jungle if she don't have to, right? Um, but the character that's much, much closer to that, right, with Korak and Miriam, um, actually never get used again in film. Um, they do have a, a long life in comic books. Korak has had many appearances in comic books. 
though I will say most of this Korak stuff I've found usually has him as basically just a young version of Tarzan and Miriam rarely appears, which I think is a shame because, you know, if you think about it, their upbringing is so different from Tarzan and Jane. Korak's story is a story of a child who becomes an animal. You know, Tarzan is an animal who discovers he's a man. It's a very opposite sort of story. And, you know, those different experiences, you know, Miriam, you know, is this traumatized girl who ends up, again, you know, kind of escaping that trauma to live as an animal with Korak, right? And so that very different upbringing would make them very, very different from Tarzan and Jane, I think would have made them very interesting characters in their own right if anyone had ever wanted to explore that. And so, yes, I do highly, highly recommend this movie and especially getting it with this Blu-ray. Um, it is an amazing adaption of an amazing novel. And I was very, very impressed with what Grapevine Video did with this. And I probably will be checking out some of their other Tarzan uh, DVDs to see, you know, what they've done with those. All right, that's it. Like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time, see ya.